Good morning. This is Erica with Launching Legacies. Welcome to our daily devotional. Today we are going to talk about some, the weary servants, right? And so this whole devotional will be dedicated to those who are serving and they're tired. They literally are like, okay, I've been serving, I've been working, and um, and I'm tired. And maybe there are some that don't want to even discuss being tired, but they are. Like, they've been doing a good work, and it's been helpful for the kingdom, but they're becoming tired in their process. And if that's you, then that's okay. This devotional is dedicated to you. And so we're going to spend some time talking about this. So first, let's talk about the confirmation of why I even started this devotional. So I have been thinking about um, servants. We've been talking about service for the last few weeks. And I have, I've been thinking about, you know, the different types of servants and diff just different things. And I spent time with the Lord, you know, talking about it. And, and God was like, you know what? There's some servants out there that are extremely weary and that um, no one seems to understand how much and how hard they're going all the time. They're just pushing, pushing, pushing. And uh, I want you to address this. And so that was one of my personal conversations with the Lord. And I was sharing it with my daughter. And I was saying to her, you know what? I think I'm going to talk about the weary servant. Just a few moments after that, we were at an event. A few moments after that, someone brought up something that 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 reiterated the fact that, okay, we need to be talking about weary servants. And then I went to church the next day. And the pastor was talking about um, being weary. Or he was giving encouragement for people who were weary to keep going. And I thought, okay, so we are on the right path. We're on the right path. This is what we need to be doing. Um, let's talk about what it means to be a weary servant. And so first let's say the first let's set the baseline here. The baseline is this: if a person is serving the Lord and they're weary, you what you don't want to do um, is not acknowledge that you're weary. Because uh, many people feel like, oh, well, I'm going to be drawing attention to myself or I'm going to be um, having self-pity if I say that I'm tired or if I say that I'm, you know, there's been a lot on me. And so they don't want to do that. And so somehow Christian Christianity has come become synonymous with this. That it's what they are, what maybe people think is long suffering, but it's not actually long suffering. This is just like not being honest and transparent, right? And so they're not saying, I'm tired, you know, <laughs> I'm worn out. Um, I'm, I'm a little exhausted. I, I'm feeling overwhelmed. They're not doing any of that. They're not saying the truth about how they're feeling at that time. And because of that, they're holding it in. We don't want that to be what we do when we're serving the Lord. If we become weary, then we don't want to be. Uh, the one that hides that weariness because that weariness can turn into other things. If it's hidden, it's not dealt with, right? And if it's not dealt with, then it festers and become resentment. And then you're not only, you're not no longer the weary servant, you're really the useless servant. If you keep holding things like, um, I'm tired, I'm overwhelmed, I'm exhausted from this process. So don't hold on to it. And how do we affirm that in the scripture? So during this devotional, we're going to talk about several servants that are weary and we'll see what the Lord did in response to them but the some of them include Elijah and um, Elijah is really a really good example of where serving because he was really a very active and go-getting like diligent servant and then all of a sudden snap he just kind of fell apart and he became weary but one thing that we see is that the Lord lets him be weary he lets him be exhausted. You don't see God going, get your butt back out here, you know, and snatching Elijah. Get up back up here. I want you to do what you were supposed to do. No, he lets him be weary. He lets him go through his process. He lets him do that. We see Jeremiah as another, another, um, person from the Bible that we see develops this issue of weariness or exhaustion in service. And the same thing is true for Jeremiah. Now through the whole book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet. Through the whole entire book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah is exhausted and tired and overwhelmed and frustrated. And God doesn't say to Jeremiah, well, he, he corrects Jeremiah in, in numerous ways, but what he doesn't do is say, I don't want to hear you say anything else, Jeremiah. You don't, I don't want to hear you complain one more time. He doesn't do that. He allows Jeremiah to vent when it's time for Jeremiah to vent. And Jeremiah has about five different times that he, or five different subjects that he vents about. So he's, that's why he's known as the weeping prophet. He kind of keeps going back to the same place, but it, but God allows him to do that. 
And what about Peter? Peter is another that we see him doing very diligent work. And then all of a sudden he makes a mistake, actually. Um, nobody attacks him. He just kind of falls off, doesn't do what he thinks he's going to be doing for the Lord. And then he goes back to, to going to his regular job. And he's just, he, as a matter of fact, he kind of disappears. He's MIA for a while. And then we see him again and he's back to being a fisherman. He's not even serving the Lord anymore. So he gets frustrated and he wears out. But God lets him go back. You know, there's not a thing of, well, what are you doing? I thought I told you. God doesn't come back with that area of dismissing his weariness. He doesn't dismiss any of the, these prophets' weariness or these servants' weariness. He allows them to have the experience that they're having. He allows them to feel the emotions of being overwhelmed. And he comes to them in that place. We see a very similar trend to this direction when we look at Matthew 5 and 4. It says, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. What is he saying? He's, saying, he's not saying don't mourn. You don't have no reason to mourn. He said, no, go ahead and mourn. Why? Because you'll be comforted. Go ahead and experience grief. Why? Because then I'm going to come to you. You know, the Holy Spirit talked to me about grief and how it, how it's more of a universal con concept. It doesn't have to only do with death, right? Grief is not being able to decide how you're going to progress in a particular relationship or situation. So you can grieve pretty much anything. You don't get to decide what's going to happen next, or you've already made a decision in your mind of what you think is going to happen next, and you don't get that. That's the experience of grief, right? I don't get to decide... I how this relationship is going to progress. I don't get to decide what I'm going to do next in my job because I've lost my job. I don't get to decide how I'm going to spend this money because I don't have the money. So grief is that position of I made a decision or I had a place I thought I was going to grow in or go forth in and I don't get to make that decision anymore. And so that sadness is becomes a very universal feeling, right? It's grief. And so what? God has given us permission to have grief about things, right? He's saying, listen, if you're a worker, you've been working all this time and you thought that somehow serving me was going to be different, right? Or this season of your life was going to be different. Go ahead and be sad. Go ahead and have grief. Why? Because when you allow yourself to grieve, this is a human thing, then you're going to be comforted. Okay. So it's the same thing when we talk about this in, in servitude. Why is God allowing uh, Elijah and, and Jeremiah and Peter and David, right? David is one who... who in the Psalms, he's crying out and he's mourning all the time. Why is he allowing us to do that? Because he says, listen, I know that this is a part of your experience. I know this is a part. Even Jesus, he grieves, right? He weeps when 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 he's at the grave with Lazarus and the and the people are having a hard time believing that he can resurrect them from the dead. He's weeping in that in that passage. And so there's a time in which we all need to be okay with where we are. Overwhelmed? Yes. I'm tired? Yes. I, I'm exhausted? Yes. I'm not sure if I can do this anymore? Yes. I might have made the wrong decision? Yes. I might have said yes too many times? Yes. I might have said no, uh, no too many times? Yes. There's all kinds of places that we can be, but the whole key behind this passage and this devotional is to ask you, are you being transparent about that place? Yeah. Are you being honest? Are you saying, you know, I don't feel well. Now, here goes the balance to it because I am going to give balance to it. I'm not encouraging you to go around and tell everybody that you know that you're so exhausted and so tired so that you can get pity. Nobody enjoys that. That's definitely not a part of the word. We're not asking for you to do something in order to garner attention. If you want attention, the Lord will pay attention to you. It's between you and him that you need to share that information. But most people in service, in service are not doing that self-pity. I want somebody to pay attention attention to me and feel bad for me. Most are not doing that. Most are not saying anything. They're not even talking to the Lord about it. They're not even saying to their spouse or to their dearest friends, to their confidence, to the counselors that they've surrounded themselves, which, which I hope you have surrounded yourself with wise people or prayer warriors. They're not even saying it to those people who are who are supposed to be bearing some of their burden. They're not saying it to the Lord, who is the bearer of their burden. They're just keeping it to themselves and their service is dwindling or barely at a at a slow crawl because they're not able to say, you know what, I just don't, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. So that's the first step. Let's give ourselves permission to say, when we are tired, when we are weary, let's give ourselves permission to be honest and say, you know what, I'm tired. I've been serving the Lord. I know I've been doing a good thing, but I am tired. And I do feel overwhelmed because when we allow ourselves to be where we are, right, we truly allow ourselves to say, okay, I am Okay, I'm tired. 
then the scripture says uh, comfort comes and we're going to find out how comfort comes. We're going to find out how regeneration comes, how, how this newness comes, right? To regenerate, to be made new in this place. We're going to find out what the scripture says in those places. But I also want to leave you with the passage from Ecclesiastes, right? Ecclesiastes says the third chapter, you all probably have heard this chapter before because they, it's commonly um, quoted at, at, um, funerals and it's talking about there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven see that passage in and of itself says that there's time for you to be weary in your work it's gonna happen okay in because the passage says in everything there's a time it, it doesn't matter what it is good bad the ugly the wonderful and the delightful all have a time okay so you are if you're in the not so wonderful and not so delightful that's okay there's a time for you right according to the scripture so it starts with that and goes all the way to verse eight with with that passage and then it says but God has made everything beautiful in his own time. That's that's important. That's verse 11, um, Ecclesiastes 3.11. But then at, at the end of that passage, when we get a little bit um, further, it says that God knows the burden that he's placed on man. Okay. And he says, and I know that. He's like, I know the burden that I placed on men. And I know that it's going to be a lot. Um, he says, I placed eternity in the heart of man, meaning that they're going to want to move towards eternity. And this is going to be a contentious situation, right? God knows that he's placed a burden on man that is heavy. Okay. And we see that in Ecclesiastes. He doesn't want you to act like you're not human. Okay. He doesn't want to want you to act like you, you don't understand what it's like to be overwhelmed. He doesn't want you to try to pretend to be perfect Patty or, you know, perfect Patrick. He wants you to be who you are, where you are, and be transparent in that place. There is, in that truth, there is power to do greater things. So think about where we are here as we end this devotional. And I'm going I'm to ask you to read Ecclesiastes, the third chapter on your own. And think about what, what happens, because it's, it's a pretty short passage. It only has, you know, 22 verses. But in, the, in those 22 verses, it's a summation of what happens in the life, right? It talks about injustice at the end. It talks about God's identification with you is somewhere in the middle. In the beginning, it talks about all the different times that things happen in our lives. So I want you to think about transparency with God in this place. If you are a weary servant, if you are tired, if you're just a little bit tired, or if you're exhausted, anywhere in between, how transparent are you with the Lord about that place? Can you cry out to the Lord? Do you know how to lament? Because there is a time for lamenting. If you don't, I want to encourage you to spend time with the Lord and be honest about where you are and what's going on. Because the scripture says that once you're able to do that, when you're holding on to where you really are, then there's some blessings of comfort that are going to come to you. I want you to be comforted. I know I, I pray you want me to be comforted. So I'll be praying for you. Please be praying for me that we encourage ourselves to move into the place that God wants us to be so that we can be well. All right. Until tomorrow, have a wonderful day and God bless you.